beginning of the season, uh, we start three and six, and then end up winning the last ten games of the season, thirteen of the last fourteen, sit at thirty and fifteen or thirty one and fifteen. Uh, Coach, could you just kind of talk about how things started and then uh, the finish here? Sure. Uh, the beginning of the season, I mean, we were still kind of shaking out some bugs, trying to figure out exactly who our starting lineup was. Um, we were kind of going with two separate, uh, you know, a couple different um, fields and figuring out what we were trying to do. Um, you know, we also went through a few things as a team, and we just needed to get a little bit closer and uh, start to figure out that we can't do this alone, that we need to work together. Um, and so we were able to uh, make that transition and, and have those conversations around spring break. And to me, that's really where they decided that, you know, uh, we can do this. And, and they started to work together a little bit. Um, and then that was perfect timing in a sense of heading into the conference. Um, we were, you know, had a really good um, run there at one point. Uh, we battled a little bit of an injury and then we were able to get Alexa back and, and um, you know, kind of hit our stride again. So hopefully uh, we can finish out this uh, conference tournament in a positive note. Coach, I guess it uh, really starts with pitching. Um, first, you've got kind of an All-American candidate and Taylor Brandt. But then there are some other pitchers as well that have really stepped up this year. Senior Emily Kale in particular, and then also freshman Rachel Apollo, who's really uh, been able to contribute in her first collegiate season. Yeah, I mean, Taylor's, you know, uh, done a fantastic job for us in the circle, um, especially in the games where we were having a difficult time scoring runs. Um, thinking about a few games where we only won one to nothing or two to nothing or whatever it might be. Um, but we were having a hard time getting runs up on the board with Alexa out of the lineup. And so um, she did her part, kept us, uh, you know, throw those, all those shutouts and scoreless innings and really gave us an opportunity to uh, win some close ball games. Um, so that was really helpful. And, and, you know, she certainly is very capable of that. Um, Emily Kale did a fantastic job for us, um, especially she really shined coming in in relief um, that part of the middle of the year um, against Charleston and, uh, you know, had a really good game against uh, one of our non-conference opponents and things. But, um, you know, she had uh, really done a great job as, uh, in that type of role as, as relief and um, then was kind of given an opportunity to start a few games and, and was able to um, be successful. Um, Rachel, as a freshman, has, uh, you know, just been a solid rock. I feel like every time she's gone out there, she's just kept us in the game. Um, you know, they have been able to, you know, teams have been able to score a run or two off of her. Um, but for the most part, um, she's been able to at least keep us in the game in an effort to try to score a few runs. Um, so there's been a few ball games that she's lost that I told her after the game, you pitched good enough to win. Um, so, you know, she just needs to, you know, needs to stay confident and, and trust her abilities and, and we need to make a few more plays behind her. You touched on one thing, uh, scoring runs. At times, it has been a little bit of a struggle throughout the season, but if you look at the run uh, differential between us and opponents, I think we're near 100 over opponents. <laughs> um, <kind> shocking. <laughs> which is shocking even when I saw it. But, sure. Um, can you talk a bit, little bit about that? I know there's been some games where we've run ruled opponents, and it's really been here as of late within the last month or so. Yeah, I mean, well, when you have Taylor out there throwing all of those, um, you know, runless uh, games, that certainly can keep opponents uh, off that uh, board. Um, and then we just needed a few behind her to, you know, uh, give her a little bit of insurance and things. So we were able to do that. Um, as far as, you know, some of our uh, run rules and things uh, that we had recently that I can think of against Fairmont and uh, Glenville, um, you know, the girls – follow the process, you know, I mean, they just uh, hit the ball to the right side of the field and, um, you know, hit a few balls over the fence. Playing at home helps us, um, you know, with that 200 all the way around, we can sneak a few more out, um, but uh, home field advantage, I guess. Um, so, you know, I think those of, you know, Notre Dame was one of them as well, thinking back, um, but, uh, you know, that, uh, um, you know, the long ball has been able to kind of really propel some of those uh, run rules and things. So. Um, you know, they get milkshakes for run rolls, and so they uh, really like to run roll teams um, in an effort to try to score one of those later in the day. Uh, moving on to the postseason play, first you got the Mountain East Conference Tournament here this weekend. Uh, Cavs are 7-2 and two all time in the MEC tournament, and there's a couple of players that played in each of those MEC tournament games in Alexa. 
and Taylor Brandt. Uh, if you could kind of talk about the team's uh, success, the last two MEC tournaments that UV Wise has played in, and those players in particular, how they really shine. Yeah, um, I mean, they're just competitors. Uh, it's really what it comes down to. They like to go out there and compete and play their best. And, um, you know, they uh, Taylor has always been a workhorse for us at the tournament, um, and she's uh, been able to... Uh, you know, stand up tall out there and take care of business and, and try to give our offense an opportunity. Alexa has done her job in the box and, and obviously on defense as well. Um, but really, at the end of the day, they're just leaders and they want to come out there and compete and, and play on the big stage. The way the tournament's set up, uh, if you win the first two games on Friday, that's got to be the ultimate goal so you don't have to play a lot on Saturday um, and could possibly finish the tournament only playing five games, four or five games. Uh, kind of how do you, uh, what do you tell the team and how do you prepare for that first day of play? Sure. I mean, the best thing that I could probably tell them is, is that we don't want to have to fight from behind. So we need to go out there ready to uh, put up runs on the board and work ahead. Um, we've struggled at times with, uh, we've, now we have made some comebacks, uh, don't get me wrong, but um, we make things a lot easier on ourselves when we uh, can get ahead and get a lead. And I'd be interested to know what the stats are when we have a lead. Um, but if we can come out there and we can score runs early, um, then I really feel like our pitching staff and our defense should be able to uh, make plays and make pitches and, and uh, you know, be able to help us out on that first day. That's, that's the goal going into it. And, uh, you know, but everybody's excited to be in the tournament. And, you know, it's basically an entire new season. And so um, you can certainly gather some confidence and things from the regular season and some experiences and things. But you know, everybody's out there trying to uh, play their best. If you could talk a little bit about this, the last two weeks, UVA Wise has been ranked in the regional rankings. New regional rankings come out today. Uh, you got to think, you know, if the Cavs do well in the MEC tournament, possibly an at-large uh, bid into the NCAA regional, if you could just talk a little bit about uh, staying focused and keeping the team just uh, prepared on the next game. Sure. Um, Regionals is something that we've talked about all season long, um, and uh, you know it's something that I think the team has wanted. Uh, when the regional rankings, the first round came out, you could sort of see the look on their faces um, and that kind of like glimmer in their eye. It sort of really re-sparked things for them um, and gave them some confidence and like, hey, this is an opportunity. Um, and uh, you could sort of, you know just see the excitement uh, and the idea of um, being able to play past the conference and, and more importantly, I think, be a part of something bigger than themselves. Um, you know, the idea of uh, this school history, making school history, we haven't done this before, um, has I think really energized and recharged a few of them. And, and also not only just the starters, but our role players as well to, to be a part of that. Um, and that's, you know, something that we want them to feel, you know, really, this is a, this is big for them too. Um, so, uh, you know, we're really hoping that that's something that happens for us. Um, you know, we definitely um, love the idea of winning the tournament and just locking in that opportunity. And um, you know, I really feel like we've got a group of girls who are more than capable of doing that. Um, but uh, you know, hopefully, an at-large bid is in our future. If for some reason that doesn't shake out the way we want it to at the tournament, that we can continue to compete in May. All right. Thank you, Coach, and best of luck this yeah, weekend. Yeah, appreciate it.